Hello everybody and welcome back to the Space Engineers tutorial survival series. In this episode we're going to focus on creating a cargo rover which we can use to ferry cargo between different outposts. We can use it to scout out the planet. Um, the reason I'm making it is because eventually I want to get a drill rig set up on the base um, and I'm also going to use it to ferry components around. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a rover because depending on your situation they're quite beneficial to make. Um, it's the easiest way or the cheapest way in terms of energy to travel around. Um, they won't use as much energy as flying ships because they don't have thrusters. Um, well, I guess you can use thrusters as boosters, but they're very efficient at just moving around landscapes like this and scouting out different ore patches um, rather than using the ship. But depending on your situation, there may be various different reasons you want to build a rover, so I'm going to show you how to do so. The first thing you need is some steel plates and some interior plates as well. So I've just got a few of them just so we can get started here. Um, and then first thing you want to do is get a landing gear. You can toggle between the large and small blocks. I don't know what the default key bind is for this. Um, for me it's R. I think it might be P by default but I'm not entirely sure. And if we just drop a landing gear somewhere, it doesn't matter where, just on a nice flat surface, it will clamp down. And this will allow us to actually build off the landing gear and get the, the basic uh, setup for the rover. So you want to go a bit off the ground here because the, the wheels need clearance in order to spawn in. Um, and then I recommend building a chassis first. So think of it much like a real car. We want a nice base to attach the wheels to. So you don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing. Um, I don't really have a, an idea for a rover in mind. Um, I just know that I want to build one. Um, and then we're going to want a cockpit at the front. So I uh, we might go with a cab cockpit actually. I've not really used this yet. I guess it looks like a truck. Um, place it near the front of the ship. doesn't matter too much where you place it. But I'm going to stick it there for now. Um, and then we need to think about what we want on this thing. So you might want to put a survival kit on it. You might want to put an O2H2 generator on it. Um, it just depends on how you're going to want to use the rover. I'm going to want to use it as a cargo rover, so I could put a large cargo container on here. Um, the thing is they are, if I just place it here, it's not obviously piped up. They are pretty hefty, um, and the rover might flip over. So I'm not too sure if I want to do that. I'm going to look at the back of this cockpit and see that we've got two small conveyor connection ports on this. Um, different cockpits have got different connection ports on the back, so you might want to have a play around. This one's got two on the top. Um, you've got the fighter cockpit, which has a large connector on the back, conveyor port, sorry. Um, and you've also got the default cockpit as well, which has got uh, two in the middle. So yeah, there's different setups that you can use. Um, I mean, arguably, you know, the default cockpit might be better for this situation, but I'm just going to go with, with the cab cockpit because I've not used it yet. Um, and it looks like my energy is low here. So I'm going to pipe these up like this. And then we're going to go into a, actually, if you're on an Earth-like planet like this, there's really no need for the cockpit to be conveyed up to the rest of the ship unless you want to use the inventory systems on it. So what I'm going to do is put three medium cargo containers on it like this. And then the medium cargo container has got a big port at the back, which is perfect to line up with a connector. So I'm going to put a connector on the back like that, make sure it's all lined up. Um, and that will provide us with plenty of cargo storage space. Um, I'm just going to go recharge my suit real quick. Because I'm running low on juice. If you've got silver, you can actually make the large medical room. The large medical room is going to heal up your suit. Is going to heal up your health and re-energize your suit so much quicker <laughs> like it literally takes seconds rather than just standing there for ages um yeah so we've got the basics in place there we're going to add some batteries to this um just so we can charge it up in fact i might put a battery here instead directly behind the cockpit this is why it's important to lay it out before you start welding it up and then if I just sacrifice a medium cargo container there, yeah, that's a nice rover. 
You also want to think about weight distribution. Say if you're building a cargo rover like this, and you've got all your cargo containers at the back, once you're laden, the rover is going to be back heavy. So you want to put either more support here in terms of wheels and suspension power, or you want to shift the center of mass forward a bit. So on this rover, as we can see, I'm going to have all of my mass on pretty much the back half of the rover here. I mean, the battery is pretty heavy and so is the cockpit. But once these are full of ore or components or whatever I'm going to be taking around, it's going to be very back heavy. So in order to accommodate for this, I'm going to use 3x3 wheels because they're a bit bigger than the 2x2s. Um, depending on the size of the rover, you just need to sort of size them up. Um, you've got left and then you've got right as well. It does actually matter, well, it doesn't matter too much, but basically the main difference is the tyre pattern on them will be the wrong way. So, I'm going to put one wheel there, so that's near the back, and then I'm actually going to double it up. I need to go one further here so that the wheels can spawn in. Double up the wheels at the back like that, and then I'm going to place one right at the front like that. So because we've got more weight at the back, I'm doubling up the wheels just in case we hit a bump or a little jump. It can obviously take a little bit more of a hit. Then if we just scroll here, I'm going to find 3x3 three three right. It's a different block group. And then we're just going to mirror the wheels on the other side. As you can see, we need ground clearance so that these wheels spawn in. If you go into the control panel of a ship that's built with a suspension, you can add a wheel. Say if you lose a wheel, you need to go in the control panel, click add wheel and it will spawn one in, provided there's enough clearance. So if you hit a pothole or something like that, um, and you break one of your wheels off, you need to either elevate the rover so you can pick it up with a ship, you can put pistons on the rover like jacks, or dig out a little trench, and then that's how you can add the wheel back. So that looks like a pretty decent setup. Another thing you want to consider is how wide the wheels are. So as you can see, we've got a pretty good width on the wheels. This is when you're, you're taking sharp corners. Um, it will affect how quickly the ship, well, the rover will roll. And also how low your center of mass is. So as you can see, it's pretty low. Um, it is a bit on the higher side than I'd like, but overall it is pretty low. Whereas if I had that large cargo container sticking up at the top, the center of mass would be pretty high. And when we're taking you know, high speed turns, the rover would probably roll a bit easier than it will with this setup. So to be honest with you, that's a rover. If you got that welded up, you've got a battery, a connector to recharge it, and you've got the wheels which power themselves. Um, and eh, that, that'll quite happily rove around. Um, but there are a few more things we're gonna do to it as well, um, just to make it a bit easier to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a couple of pistons to the rover. So as mentioned, if the rover flips or we need to replace a wheel or something like that, it could be good to elevate the rover off the ground. So I'm going to put a piston there, a piston there, make sure these line up. So I've got one on four sides there. So say if we get, I don't know, stuck or a wheel breaks off and we need to replace a wheel, we can lower all of these pistons, push the rover off the ground, and then we can add the wheels back, weld them up, and drop the rover back down. Um, I highly recommend you do this. Um, if you want to, you can just strap a couple pistons to the side and then grind them off and weld them on the corner that needs lifting up. Say if you lose this wheel, you just want to lift this corner up. You don't have to take all four pistons. I'm just going to do it because... It's ease of use, they're not too expensive, um, and I don't know, I think it's I think it's quite cool as well. Um, the next thing we're going to add is a gyroscope. You don't have to put this on your rover, but it's very, very useful, especially if you flip the rover upside down. A gyroscope can help you right the rover very quickly. Um, basically, it's going to give you control as well in the air. As you know, with, with ships, it allows you to turn. So say if you hit a big ramp or something like that, or you accidentally, quote unquote, drive off a cliff, um, you can align yourself with the ground using the gyroscope. Um, I'll show you how to configure the override function for flipping the rover later on as well. Um, but for now, we're gonna put two of them on here. Doesn't really matter where you put them. I'm gonna put one either side of this medium cargo container for now. I'm gonna add an ore detector. 
because I want to use this for scouting out ores. So I'm going to put that there. And then I'm also going to put an antenna on the other side, uh, which we need to build a beacon first, but that's fine. Um, oh, hang on. We'll get that built. Um, I'm going to put an antenna right here as well. So, yeah, I'm just going to go quickly grab all the components to weld this up, um, and I'll get back to you. Well, while the rover's off the ground as well, weld up the chassis. If you're worried about it breaking, um, a good idea can be to make this heavy armor. Heavy armor's a lot tougher. You could even use blast doors, which are... <laughs> blast doors are almost, like, invincible. Um, so, yeah, it could be an idea to use blast doors, heavy armor... Or, you know, I guess you can come up with your own ways of doing it. We are going to put heavy armor slash blast or bumpers on either end, though. Especially the front. Um, because that's often the bit that you're going to smack into the ground. Trust me, speaking from experience. Um, let's just see how much of this we can get welded up. Okay, not masses. So I'm going to add all these to my build planner. Do the gyroscopes first. And that should be build planner full. Yeah, and then I'm just going to go get this welded up. Okay, so the rover's welded up. But yeah, so we've got pistons, it's battery powered, so this thing is a fully functional rover now. Um, there's just a couple more things we're going to do. So I'm going to get some blast doors here because, as mentioned, they are pretty much, for the most part, um, invincible. Um, and I'm just going to... Let's have a little think here. Branch this off. Just trying to think how I want to do this here. Um, I want to create a blast door bumper. So I'm going to use... Where are they? I swear they had like... Maybe not. Maybe it was a fever dream. I mean, that'll do. Looks a, looks a bit horrendous, like, but... Um, and then... See if we can't cheer up the front of this a little bit. Just looks a bit... A bit droopy. Uh, let's have a think. something like this something simple just to cover up those conveyor ports because I don't like I hate conveyor ports absolute bane of my existence yeah it looks alright that looks like a bit of a bit of a chunky truck um, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of extra protection just on the underside um, probably mostly around the wheels here. So I'm going to add just these little structures like this. As mentioned with the mining ship, you will crash the rover at some point and you will break it. Um, so I'll show you a little trick. Uh, to easily get this thing fixed as well. And it also applies to, to mining ships and, and really a ship of any sort. Um, but I'm just going to get these little sections built under here first. I love I love small grids. They're just so, they're so cheap. Once you start building larger ships, everything costs. Everything's just so expensive. Are these wheels aligned? Oh my god. Okay, yeah, they are. Like that. There we go. Yes, yeah, so we've got a nice chassis now. Um, and then for the top part, I'm just going to add some blocks in here for now. Just to pull it back a little bit. Um, and then at the end, we'll just have something to cover up the conveyor port. <laughs> I don't like them. They just, uh, I don't know, they just stick out.
at the front here. Have like a gradual little slope down into maybe a spotlight block. You can do whatever you want with your rover. Um, like I said, I'm just I'm just giving a little example here. There you go. Yeah, it looks all right. Um, just adding some like bumper plates to it. Almost. I'm conscious, I'm running out of jetpack fuel here as well. So I'm just gonna go get all this bodywork welded up, and I'll show you how to configure the wheels. All right. So the rovers pretty much complete now. Um, I'm probably just going to do a little quick paint job as well. Uh, always helps. So I think I'm going to leave the bulk of it grey. I'm just going to do a few accents here and there with blue. And then the good old white stripe. Just along the middle of these fins here. They might have it right down the middle as well. There we go. Um, and then the wheels. Uh, might have the wire as well. And there we have our rover. So once you're ready to let it go. Grind those off. And the rover will spring to life. And there we have it. Now if we jump in. I've turned it off because I didn't want the battery to drain power. So you can use Y to turn things on and off quickly. Um, or go into the control panel and turn the battery on. We now have a fully functional rover. You see by default, the wheels will all turn. Um, and already you've got a pretty, pretty decent rover, but we can make it a lot better. As you can see, if we do a hard turn here, you see how it rolls. It doesn't flip over, which is usually an indication of a good design. Um, but <laughs> it does roll quite a lot. And if we're on like an incline or something like that, it probably will tip over. So you can put the parking brake on with P, by the way. But I would recommend going straight to the toolbar um, and park brake on off with a separate board like that. And that will just clamp all the wheels down. So if we go into the control panel, we find the wheels. This is obviously going to depend on the order in which you place them, what number they'll be. So typically to find out which one it is, I turn steering off. And you can see that's the rear wheel. So it's one, two, three. So left. So I'm going to put left, rear. Then I'm guessing this is the middle one. Yep. So this is left. Middle. And this must be left, front. Turn the steering back on now. Um, and then we're going to do the same for the right side. Turn steering off. Oh, okay, so I place the rear one first as well. So the right rear. Right middle. Right front. And we're going to turn steering back on. Cool, so the way I typically like to have it is I have steering at the front and then power at the rear. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the rear ones. Uh, hang on a minute. So we're going to get uh, the middle ones as well. Yeah, why not? So we'll get the middle and the rear wheels. Hold on, holding control to put them all in a group. And I'm just going to make a group called rear wheels. You can turn off show block in terminal and then it won't show the individual blocks, it'll just show um, the group. And if we get the front wheels as well, we put them in a group, so left and right front. Turn off in terminal and this will just clean up your control panel because sometimes on larger ships and grids especially, you're just going to get absolutely clogged up with loads of different things here. So I'm going to turn off steering for the rear wheels, and then for the front wheels, I'm going to turn off brakes. 
Sometimes if you do this, it will help you from flipping your rover when you come to a sudden halt. So if I just get going like dead quickly here, and then slam the brakes on, I'll just show you. You see how nicely it stops. Now if I put brakes on, <laughs> if I put brakes on the front wheels, I'm a bit scared. Yoink! You see how the rover starts tipping off the ground. So if I'd been going quicker or I had more momentum because of mass, um, I likely would have done a flip. So I always recommend turning brakes off for the front wheels. And then the rear wheels uh, turn steering off as well. I'm going to have propulsion on all of them. Then I'm going to go to the rear wheels. And I'm actually going to increase the strength. So this is the strength in the suspension. If I, if I start to increase this, you'll see the back of the rover start to tip up. See? Because the suspension requires more weight to compress. And if I lower it, we'll do a bit of like a low rider, a bit of a twerk. Like that. Yeah, that's as soft as it can get. So I'm going to increase this. By default, it's 6. I'm just going to pop it up to 10 for now. Just see if that levels out the rover. You might need to increase this as you gain weight. Um, so you can actually go into the G menu, groups, rear wheels, and then you can find... Decrease strength and increase strength. And then you can do it on the fly depending on how much load you're carrying. Next, we need to be able to dock up to the base. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a connector on the base. That allows us to dock the rover to the base. But we're going to need to do a few tricks with the suspension in order to make that happen. So I'll show you how to do that. So, let's get a connector attached to the base for us to dock the rover to. This is pretty much redundant now, it's served its purpose. So, I'm going to remove the connector from here. Deposit these components. Um, and I'm also going to get rid of these conveyors for now. They may return, but I don't need them right now. So, I'm just going to get rid of them. Get some components back. Pop them in the large cargo container. Obviously it depends on what we're getting. If we're going out to collect ores, we're going to need to insert it into the refinery. Um, whereas if we're getting components, we're just going to need to dump it straight into the large cargo container. So it depends what you're using the rover for. Um, you might want to have a dock over here, you might want to have a dock over here. Um, it sort of depends. Um, for this purpose, I'm just going to dock it over here. But you could actually have an anchor on both sides if you wanted to. <coughs> oh god, excuse me. <coughs> oh, sneezing. Man, pollen is so high in the UK at the moment. Ugh. Okay, so we're going to make a little platform to put the rover on. And in order to get the rover on a bit easier, we're also going to add a ramp to get up. You can actually jump with the rover, I'll just quickly show you. If you, if you hold down the... You can, I, I didn't figure this out for a while, but it's pretty cool. Um, if you hold down the crouch button, whatever yours is set to, hold it till the rover does a squat and then let go, you will you will do a little bounce. So if you need to get over like a little bump or something, you, you can jump the rover. I don't know why that makes me so happy, but it does. Anyway... Um, yeah, we're going to build out a little platform here, and I'm going to have the ramp. Mm, where am I going to have it? Oof, I might have it here. So there are actually ramp blocks which I'm going to use. Like this, just for a gradual slope. And then down the centre here, I'm going to use passages. The reason I'm using passages is because if we drive the rover up on the ramp and we need to modify or repair the chassis we can get underneath easily by just crouching through these passages and welding upwards it's a neat little trick and then we'll dock the rover how big is this thing? roughly it's like two and a half blocks so probably go one more back Probably go to like here. I 
and then we can very easily oh, wrong one and then we'll put a connector here <laughs> if I could get it the right way around come on <laughs> right so let me just quickly weld this up make sure I've got nothing in my build planner and I'll show you how you get the rover onto the docking port you can actually use the strength function I showed you um, and just lower the rear suspension to connect but there's another way to do it that I'll show you as well. Just depending on the size of the rover, that might not always work, and also your wheel layout. So we are going to have to reverse this in. So hopefully you've uh, you've passed your driving test. It's not that difficult. Just give yourself enough room, and take it slow. Right. So if I use the strength, for example, I'm just going to lower it down now. That was a bit quick, but you get the idea. And then we can lock the connector and recharge the batteries. If I just increase the strength back up to 10. And um, what we're gonna do instead is if you click this button here, remember how we put these into groups and turn them off in the terminal? You can obviously turn them back on if you want. Um, but if you click this show hidden blocks, it will show those that you've hidden from the terminal. I'm just then gonna control click all of the wheels and make a group with the creative name All Wheels. Go to the G menu for the toolbar, Groups, All Wheels, and then we're gonna go on do, 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 do Height Offset, Decrease, and Increase. This will lower all the wheels. So if we press this now, hang on, there we go, this one. We can lower the whole rover down until we're matching the level the connector's at. And if we just drive back, we can dock up. So you can do it either way. Uh, it doesn't really matter how you do it. Something you have noticed is these wheels are giving us one hell of an acceleration. So if we go to all wheels now, because they're all powered, we've got a group for them. Uh, I'm gonna scroll down, go to power, and I'm probably gonna cut it in half, in all honesty. Just put the rover back up make sure we're not yeah nice and gentle acceleration and then I'm also going to put a speed limit on the rover so it might be tempting to start barreling around at absolute light speed um, but I would turn this down considerably um, because once you get up to speed in the rover it can be quite hard to stop in a hurry especially if you you can't see the ground in front of you too clear as I did in my previous rover tutorial and drive off a cliff so <laughs> So I would recommend turning it, turning it down to about about 100 will do. Um, I usually just put it a bit lower, um, but it's entirely up to you. Now, the final little... Well, I've got to find a couple tips, actually. Um, number one is the gyro override function. So one of these gyros is redundant. So I'm going to name one flip. And then you're going to click on override controls. Check this box. So basically, this gyroscope will constantly input um, one of these axes of your, so your pitch or roll. Um, and this means it's constantly going once you turn it up. So if I turn this up slowly, you'll see it's constantly rolling the ship forward without me doing it. Now this can be very useful if you flip over. It can do a lot more than you just dragging your mouse down. Um, I'm just going to find the one that's sideways. That's probably the one that's sideways because it's the most stable. Oh, maybe we'll go with your. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll go with your. Um, and we're just going to drag it up. Maybe turn it off first so it doesn't do it. Drag it up to like, I don't know, 30 for now. You can always change it later. And then make sure the gyroscope is off. And then we're going to go to the toolbar. All blocks. Find that gyroscope and then toggle block on off. So if we toggle this on, you can see. 
All right, okay, right. I've got the perfect example to show you here. So if we <laughs> if we toggle this on, um, it should begin to write the rover. There you go. Now, that was all intentional and according to plan, of course. Um, but at least I got to demonstrate how it works. Next thing I'm going to show you how to do is repair this in a hurry. So say if you flip it and you break some parts, this applies for any ship if you damage it. What you can do is if we name the grid first, actually, just so it shows up in the menu. Go to the info tab, grid name. I'm going to call it uh, Blue Rover creatively. And then we look at the ship and you hold Control B. This will add it to your blueprints list. So blueprints are ships that you can spawn in or you've got access to for a, project, uh, for a projection Sorry, in a survival world. So next up, we're going to queue up a small projector. And this allows us to project blueprints into the survival world. And then you can actually weld up those projections. Doesn't matter uh, where you put this. It does matter how you place it though, so I'll just give you a quick guide. Uh, ooh, ooh. Maybe like there. When you're placing the projector, you want the cross to be on the top and then the vertical line to be at the front, like the picture. Oh, weird voice crack. But you see how the, croc, uh, the cross is at the top and then you've got that line. It's, it's a bit, hard, bit difficult to see, but you see on this side here, there's no line. And then this side, you've got these two sort of clamps and then you want this cross on the top. So it, it's a bit difficult, but th that's the right orientation for the projector. Pop it on the ship with those lines, the vertical lines facing forward of the ship. Jump in the cockpit, go to the projector block, click on blueprints, then find the one you just made, copy to clipboard, and you'll see it spawn in. So that, that's what a projection looks like. Um, and as long as this is connected to a grid in some way, you can actually, you see here, I can actually start welding this up from the projection, but it has to be connected to a grid. So it has to be connected to a block or like a landing gear on the floor. Then we're just going to flip it round. Uh, there we go. I find the right one. And we're just going to mirror it, mirror it up with the rover. Click keep projection so that the projection is always there. And we're just going to sync it up here. So we want to go down a little bit. Maybe down, is it down one more? There we go. Oh. No, I've not done that right. There we go. Now, if we break a part of the ship, let's say, I don't know, we break one of these fins. Oh no, my fin. You can see that the projector will actually show these broken blocks. And then we can just weld them back up. And it's that easy. Um, <laughs> until the projector gets broke, of course. Um, but you can do that with mining ships. Um, you can do that with large grid ships. You can do that with literally any grids. You can even do it for your base if you want to. Um, just keep in mind, if you do make any changes or what have you, you will need to get the blueprint again and update the blueprint. So I'm just going to weld these spotlights up so the rover is complete. And there you have the guide on how to build a rover. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, please like, comment and subscribe to support the channel. Leave any questions you have in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.